I'm getting the set set up. Welcome, 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 everyone. I'm so excited you're all here today. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, we are doing a live video feed here. Let me make sure I can see everybody that we're all connected. I'm super excited here. Ah, fantastic. I've got my chat up. So if you would like to say hello and welcome yourself, uh, let us all know where you're coming from. That would be fantastic. Oh, I just realized I put the tripod and the camera in front of my board full of notes. As you know, we're doing a video uh, series here on free motion machine quilting. And let me slow down, even though I'm already slower than normal. I'm trying to be mellow today because I'm normally caffeinated. But let me welcome any new viewer out there. Hello, my name is Rob Appel. I am incredibly blessed to be a quilt maker. I work with the team out at Stitch in Heaven in beautiful Quitman, Texas, although I am very fortunate to live in beautiful Morro Bay, California, where we're at today. I am leaving tomorrow on a jet plane to fly to Texas for the quilt show that's happening this week. And so I'm super excited I'll be there in person. So if you're gonna be at the quilt show, in uh, Quitman, come by, say hello. Um, really, really excited, and um, it's going to be amazing. So, suitcase is half packed, and so that's why we're going to do the live video today. If you're new to the channel, so well is my brand here at Stitch in Heaven, but Stitch in Heaven is a YouTube network. We have a bunch of great presenters coming all the time, all during the week. So, that's why we encourage you to be subscribed. Um, we're also using Facebook Live a lot for fun, Coffee with Anita. So, that's wonderful. And it's very important to me that we are a community, that we're engaging, that we're sharing our time together here. So I've made a couple changes based on comments from the last video. Can you hear me okay? Because I've lowered my microphone. A couple of comments about the audio quality being fairly poor last week. And um, I am poor of hearing and a loud talker anyways. And I was out in my wood shop running a very loud power tool without my proper ear protection. So I could have been screaming last week, but I've lowered the microphone. Uh, thank you, Linda. Uh, thank you. Um, perfect. Okay, great. Uh, Bible, is that your name? Bible Sue, I love that. Uh, fantastic. Sorry, I'm a slow reader, folks. So I love to engage with you all here. Um, uh, that's why I've got my iPad out here so I can see all the comments. So yes, microphone may fall off when we start quilting and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do some free motion machine quilting here. I want to talk a little bit about my setup and um, go through a couple of uh, the announcements, announcements, announcements. So let's get those started real quick. I can't believe I just did that on live YouTube. T-shirts, you've been asking for the So Well with Rob Appel t-shirts. They are on order, probably a couple weeks until they arrive, but we've got this wonderful green color coming and a nice like ash gray. We've added the Stitch in Heaven logo below, which is really cool looking in black and white are the logos on the green or on the gray. So uh, I've heard the request. You've all been saying shirt, shirt, shirts. So the shirts are coming. They are on order. I want to confirm that the needle packages for our October 20th, the needle knowledge, the live uh, Zoom event, it's sold out. So I'm so sorry if uh, you are just hearing about it for the first time, but we are doing a live class with Rhonda Schmetz from Pierce. No, <laughs> I promise I wouldn't mess that up. Rhonda Pierce from Schmetz Needles. Oh, Rhonda, you've got to hate me by now. Uh, anyway, Anyway, so she's going to be doing an awesome hour-long class teaching us all about the needles and all of the knowledge we need. So anyways, the needles and your gift sets have been sent out. Everybody, you should have them. Class is 4 p.m. Central Time next Thursday. Uh, that's the 20th, so I'll be hosting that from Texas. Super cool. Uh, yesterday, we posted in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month a wonderful uh, new – it's a quilted jacket, so it's quilting and garment making together. There's a great tutorial at the Stitch and Heaven YouTube where you're watching this this. Both Abby and Anita work on it together. It's really fun to see the ladies. And so anyways, I'll encourage you to check out that tutorial. We've got a great pattern for you. It uses a beautiful uh, series of fabrics, a very special story there. So that was yesterday's tutorial. And next week, I think it might be a full studio tour that I'm doing here. I was supposed to write that down and I have forgotten. Um, so we are going to work today focused on stitch control with our free motion. That's what I want our topic to be. I'm going to try to keep it to about a 15 or 20 minute video. I've already been rambling for most of that time. Um, 
But that's what I really want to talk about is when we're working domestically on a seated free motion machine. And oh, well, let me apologize. I really wasn't trying to do any clickbait or anything like that last week, folks. Uh, I define domestic sewing machine by something I'm going to sit down at. I'm going to move the quilt underneath the machine versus moving the machine over the quilt like the long arm I have across the room. And several of you called me out on that, and I think it's very fair. Yes, the domestic I was using in the last video was a Juki. The model happened to be DX3000. It's a multi-stitch machine. It's 12 inches. Juki makes a great DL or DX2010, uh, 2020, something like that. It's a wonderful single straight stitch machine. It might be 10 inches, but again, yes, there are a lot of these sewing machines. Machines have just gotten bigger over the years. And because I love to quilt, the one thing I can tell you, the bigger the sewing machine throat space, the easier it really is to move your larger quilts. So over the years, I just purchased larger and larger sewing machines because I really do enjoy to sit down and quilt what I call domestic free motion quilting. So I wasn't trying to trick you all into watching this video and then showing you this giant machine. But because of those comments, yes, I have my old, old FOF sewing machine. This I measured and from the edge of the machine to the needle is seven inches. And, and I've put it in order because I really believe in having the proper presser foot for your sewing machine. My friend Bob quilts here on a dude's machine on the featherweight. So at any rate, I will order the foot and we're going to try to learn to see if we can do free motion on the featherweight. We know it's possible and that's partly why I'm doing this video series on working on a bigger quilt in a common space, let's call it. And um, so I think that's really, really cool. And so that's what we're going to do today is I've got a smaller machine. We're going to talk about some of the limitations to that smaller machine and some of the workarounds and some of our stitch control here while we're working on the quilt. Now, in the description uh, for today's video, I've got the links. We have the pre-order for this black. This is the beautiful Texas Starlight quilt. This was our theme quilt for the Better Homes and Gardens magazine. Hopefully, you can all see that beautiful. We have a white version that you can purchase now. Um, and then also, real quick in the description, I just want to let you know, last of the announcements before we get quilting, it, no, I have two announcements before we get quilting. But uh, second to last announcement before we get quilting, retreats are coming up. So I have a retreat I just announced, and that's actually at Quitman, Texas, at the wonderful retreat center, February 22 through 26 next year in Texas. And that we have registrations in the video below. But I also am just getting ramped up and I realized I have a few spaces left for my California retreat. Now that's a month from now. That is November. Let me make sure I get my dates right. November 15th through 20th. You'll need to look at the robappel.com website for that information. It's a private retreat I do, and normally it's sold out, but we've extended the time this year, and I'm not sure if that's possibly why we have a few seats left or if I just didn't advertise this year because I didn't. Uh, but at any rate, I know many of you in the past have asked, Rob, how do we come to the retreat that's on the beach, in the pine trees? So anyways, there are spaces. Uh, reach out to me if you need that personal. It's a personal event, robappel.com. At any rate. There we go. So with that said, we are going to set up here on this machine. In a few moments, I'm going to move the camera close so you can see what I'm doing. But let's talk about what we're looking at here. So like I said, this is the FOF machine. Hopefully you can see it. Okay, good. Get my quilt out of the way. Seven inches from needle to edge. It's an older machine, so it's not real fast. So the actual speed, the RPMs of the machine is the second thing I'm looking for when I'm looking for a sewing machine that I will focus my machine quilting, my free motion with. So earlier a moment ago, I mentioned the bigger the machine, the better. If I can get one that's straight stitch only instead of a multi-stitch like the machine I was using last week or this machine, I prefer that. And it's a basic engineering reason, but a straight stitch only machine has a little bit longer timing cycle and therefore it just is less likely to skip stitches, especially if you're doing applique, fusible applique, like I like to do when I glue down my pieces like this. So that's just a little nuance. So then speed is something we're gonna see here because today this machine runs slow. So I've been practicing a little bit to balance my stitch length 
because when you're doing free motion machine quilting, our stitches are either set to zero and or our feed dogs are dropped. So all of our stitch length, all of our motion is based on our rhythm and our motion, okay? And so last week I talked about having a nice extension table. Now this sewing machine has this little tool tray normally that fits on here that doesn't make this all that much larger. So we were talking last week and I just happened to notice, ha, by the way, and this is a project we're going to be working on with a full tutorial real soon. This is the In the Blossoms quilt. Little advertisement, you can get one of these. But I'm going to recommend you get three kits because that was my problem. The kit box is a perfect height for my sewing machine here and this would have made a great extension table but I need three of them to go around the machine. So at any rate, um, these kit boxes are better than just packaging. They're awesome for positioning around your sewing machine. Weight them up with the stash you don't want the other people in the house to find and you can build yourself a table, but that didn't work for me. I know I'm jumping around. You're probably wondering what my socks are doing on the table. That's the, the last announcement we'll get to here in a second, but let me stay focused. It's hard enough for me to stay focused. So the table from my Juki sewing machine is not right for this, but it wasn't too far off. So what I've done is I've removed the tool tray and I've put the bed of the machine. And if you're not aware, folks, almost every machine bed table extension like this, the feet are adjustable by turning them one way or the other. So what I did is I lowered them from the height of the other machine to this machine. And now this all fits pretty dang nice. Like last week, I'm going to use my sew slit mat or my Supreme slider mat, and I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to go ahead and secure this over the hole. But because this is kind of cattywampus, and I do believe that's a quilting term, and it's kind of dusty on the back, I'm going to use my real quilting tool, the blue painter's tape, and I'm going to take a couple little digits, and I'm just going to tape my mat down from slipping because if your mat slips and gets involved in the quilting, you're going to be frustrated. Okay. Now let me stop right there. We're going to come back to the socks, but I want to do a comments check. We have so many wonderful folks out here. I want to say hello to everybody. Hello, Dee and Nat and Mary. Fantastic. Let me see if I've missed any questions. Fantastic. I appreciate you all letting me know where you're from. This is beautiful. Okay, folks. So if you have questions in regard to stitch length, I'm going to try to go over that stitch control. That's our major focus for this. We are going to spend tons and tons of time quilting over this quilt on domestic machines and the different ones I can find, different sizes and stuff, and have some fun. So we're just going to enjoy this quilt as we go together over the next several live feeds. So let's talk about, I had uh, the socks here on the table that I want to discuss. I was showing off my wonderful socks last week and I thought I had to bring, these were my Christmas present last year. These are custom socks. These are printed with my wonderful dog's face. That is Winston, my own little chihuahua on my socks. So I was talking about having some pretty special socks last week and I think that those definitely qualify. So anyways, folks, I wanted to share that with you and I noticed that I do have, uh, yes, ADHD, obviously. Uh, one other question, answer. Uh, lots of questions about the clamps and clips. I'm using a one inch table, so I had a two inch clip to baste my quilt to the table. So my question was, what size clips do we need? And my answer to all of you is, please measure the table you're using and get a clamp that will open larger than your table. Some of those real lightweight folding tables are considerably thicker than you think. So just double check where your grip part is on your table. It might be as much as four inches or three inches. So just get a clamp that will go at least an inch larger in opening so you can secure your stuff. Okay, I want to make sure that we're taking some of our time in these videos to answer the questions that were asked during the last videos because now we're going to start quilting. And when I start quilting, it's really hard for me to be reading these comments. So during the meantime, folks, I want you to go ahead and settle in. I'm going to move the camera. Okay, I'm moving. Hold on. I know we're coming around here. So I've got our other tripod set up so you can see what we're doing. It'll just take me a second here. Okay, and I'm going to leave you all zoomed out a little bit, and I'm going to bring the quilt in upside down because we have some other things to discuss. 
Last week I was quilting on a Juki machine and I was showing some poor tension on the back of the project. Okay. So now let's just move all of you. Hang on. I want to make sure you can see what's going on here, folks. Great. So last week I was working over here in this section, and you can see I had some skip stitches. This is the back. This is the bobbin. And a lot of you knew the one, well, there's two tricks here. One is don't use a solid backing, right? Because it shows every single possible mistake. And two, you really should be matching your threads so that we're not exaggerating the mistakes by having a black thread from the top and a green thread from the bottom. I'm going to make as many mistakes as I possibly can during this series of videos because these are things I often think are good ideas and they turn into mistakes. And I'm wondering if any of you have had that same experience in your quilting world. So I'm just quilting like a regular quilter would here, having some fun. Okay, so at any rate, I switched around and I think I started right here on my test about 20 minutes ago before we started the video with the Foff machine. Okay, I ran some straight lines over here and you can see I'm having some similar, no skip stitches this time. Those balls are from where I've taken too many stitches in one spot. We talked about that last week. So there's a few of those where I've started and stopped. And this machine does not have automatic needle down. So I am taking more stitches in locations to just position myself at times also. I'll show you that in a minute. So as we go through here, though, here's what I want you to see is on the top of the quilt today, I was struggling and I'm showing more of the green thread. So I've been adjusting my tension accordingly, loosening the top so that I'm not pulling up. Okay, so here's where we were working. I'm going to see if I can zoom in all for you. There. Do you see those green specks? So that's the bobbin thread coming up. And I'm not destroyed about it, but this is why we often say match your threads, because it's really, really tough to actually get your thread tension to always balance in the batting. Okay, but now we're looking at two different machines that seem to be having different but same tension issues with the same thread setup. So this is something I want to show you, and I've noticed this before with threads, and I almost hesitate to say the brand, because what I'm going to show you is a good quality thread. It's, it's Mettler's thread, but it doesn't look great on the spool. Watch this, folks. Holding my camera as still as possible, I want us just to focus on that thread right there. That's the thread that's running through my machine right now. That thread, as you can see, is not consistent. It is thick, it is thin, it is not the same thickness. If you've watched my tension videos, you have seen me discuss the talking about the way that the tension discs work. They're just two springs pushing against each other. So if the thread thickness is changing, it's very hard for our tensions to stay consistent. I mentioned I was using the black Mettler thread yesterday or in our last video because I just simply was out of my black Orofil. Orofil thread does not look like this. And that's one of the reasons that I really recommend looking at your threads uh, and why it might make a difference so much more in the free motion than it would in the patchwork. Okay, enough said about thread. Let's get to quilting, folks. I know that's what you're dying for. We're going to spend a few minutes running this machine talking about stitch length, talking about balance, and then I might have to put in a different color sample just so you can really see what we're doing. Right? I want to be fair to everybody. There we go. Let's back out a little bit. Okay. So we're going to talk about starts and stops because we probably have a new quilter out there. Right now my presser foot is in the up position, so I'm going to lower it. On this machine it has a halfway position. It's just a foth thing. It does not have automatic needle down, so I'm going to take my hand wheel and 
manually crank it one time in the proper direction. And now I can pull out here and I can pull up and there's that green bobbin thread, just like last time. Now what I'm gonna do, because my presser foot is still in the proper location, is I'm gonna take a few stitches. Notice I uh, found myself a stool this week. I'm seated, which makes it a little bit easier to maintain my balance. Now from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and start one of my quilting motifs. And after I am out of the way, oops, and I almost did it again, I'm so accustomed to a needle down. I need to lower my needle to hold my quilt in position so I can come back here and trim away those threads so that we don't catch those in our machine quilting as we start moving. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and take a moment and find my rhythm. Okay, let me drop that needle. Now, I know it's very hard for you to see the stitching because it's black on black, but we've already discussed this. It's a beautiful quilt. I want it to be beautiful when it's done. And today we're talking about stitch control. So this machine is a slower machine. So I've had to slow down my hands. This is patting the head and rubbing the belly. The faster the machine goes, the shorter the stitches probably will become because your hands are going to be moving slow. However, the faster the machine runs, the easier it is to move the project under the needle. Here's my example. I'm going to put this machine pedal to the metal. Now it's easier for the quilt to move in that swirling motion, that circular motion. I don't have the drag because I'm not waiting for the stitch. So a lot of folks talk about setting a speed control on your machine so that you can set a speed of your machine such as pedal to the metal and then you balance the way your hands move. But sometimes quilting that fast is a challenge and it's frightening. So we want to be able to get a rhythm. So if I don't want my machine to move that fast then I can slow my foot speed or set a regulator Right now I need to do my straight line along here, but I still want equal stitch length, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slow down my actual hand speed. When the machine is moving slower, your hands need to move slower. If the machine is moving fast, your hands need to move fast for a balanced stitch. So if you're getting large stitches, you're probably moving your machine fairly slowly and your hands very rapidly. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate that because remember, we want our quilt to be beautiful when we're done. But I think you can see how that might work. And like I said, when I was pointing out those points, when I come into the corner of a design, that's an example of too many stitches in one location, right? Or the machine moving way too fast and hands moving too slow leaving way too many stitches in one spot. So for a balance, you want to get the machine first to a point where you're comfortable to work around it. Then you can do your starts and stops, whether you're cutting thread or not, and constantly reposition. Next thing I'm going to do, let's zoom out for you all. I guess that's about as far out as we can zoom, is what we call fluff and stuff. Paula Reed developed that term, I believe. And I'm just lifting the quilt around all of the corners of that MIG shift extension table. Okay, Michelle, thank you for that comment. I did just see that, that you're happy we're doing this. I'm having so much fun. Glad it's benefiting somebody or so, several folks out there. Okay, so we're just lifting constantly, and then I'm just working between my hands. Oh, and I even forgot to put on my gloves. My gloves make it so much easier to move the quilt around, okay? So now let's talk about this a little bit, more the limitation of the machine. Let me see if I can get you all a nice camera angle. Sorry, it's going to bump around a bit. Here we go. This limitation right here. So you can see my hand is really hitting the edge of the machine. There's not much quilt over here. But what I did do originally is we started over here more in the center. And from the center, I've been constantly working out. So when I started, I had a lot of quilt wadded up into the edge of the machine. 
But as I keep working from the center in all these directions, I'm not really fighting too much quilt and I'm not trying to bring too much quilt into the machine. If you missed last week's video, we talked about being able to rotate the quilt while the machine is in a stopped position, but the needle is down. So right here, if I wanted to rotate this quilt, because the needle's down, and I might even lift my presser foot. Don't forget to put it back down, Rob. Right? Oh, excuse me. Sorry, I hit you all with my shoulder. It's not easy to quilt with a camera in your way. That's certainly for sure. Okay? But see, let's say for some reason, maybe it's just as simple as visual. I want to be able to see where I'm coming to. I've rotated the quilt. Whenever you rotate your quilt, you really want to make sure, confirm that none of your backing, none of your edges have gone underneath where you're about to start stitching. Okay, and now we can just bring that right back around here. And, oh, make sure I lower that presser foot where we would add a big bunch of like caterpillar thread on the back, big balls of caterpillar thread. And now I can just come right back into that motion I was doing before. Just doing some fill-in space. We're doing straight line echo quilting around the colored patchwork, the, these beautiful ombres from Moda. And then everything else is fill-in so that our stars and diamonds will pop. So I'm doing more dense quilting, but that's not necessarily changing the stitch length. That's just the amount of quilting I'm doing in the areas to impact it. Pushing down the fabric into the batting so that the areas that were originally patchwork show up. If you missed last week's rumors, we talked about the fact that you were not supposed to quilt over stitching or cross your threads. And if you were watching closely right there, I just crossed over my threads to show you that nothing terrible has happened to the quilt. And I have yet to be struck by lightning. And I've done that several times. Okay, now as I approach the star, maybe something you didn't get to see from last week, is I'm going to use the edge of the foot and I'm going to follow this star down. Some of you talk about using a ruler for this. <laughs> oh, let me drop my needle. I will tell you, I first time I did a ruler, I didn't know how to use it, and I was moving the ruler and not the quilt, and that was terrible. So I'm going to just kind of, like I just showed you a moment ago, I'm going to realign this quilt so now I'm nice and square. And I'm just going to keep on regulating my speed while I push the quilt. Okay, and I'm going to use this foot down here at the bottom to regulate. And this is, right now, what so many of you were talking about. I've got a lot of quilt bound up. It's hanging off the table. It is literally, I just got caught in my thread basket. I mean, this is what we were talking about, why quilting on a domestic, a small machine can be challenging, okay? So this is one of the reasons right here, because it is hard to control and the weight of the quilt. So my example for that is, once I get locked in, I'm just going to find my stop point right here. I'm just going to fight from here to here. Then I'm going to fill in this space, and then I'm going to take a break. And taking those breaks is equally as important as coming back to the project, right? So it's easy to move this section here. It was hard to get here, but now that I'm here because it's flattened down and I'm controlling the width, you notice my hands haven't moved. Hopefully you can see all of that. I'm locked in, and now I have nice control. And if I need to move my hands like I do at this moment, I'm going to stop the machine because I do not have needle down automatic on this one. I'm going to drop the needle. Now I'm going to stretch my fingers out a little bit. Okay, I just need to fill in this section, and then we're going to tie off and talk about a couple other things. Just trying to equally fill that in nice and dense, coming to a spot and where the stitching already was. And again, I'm going to take four or five stitches in place. Now I'm going to lift my presser foot up. My needle's fortunately already up this time. Pull out. I'm going to put a little bit of pressure down on my fabric around. And as I pull up, hopefully you can see there's a little bit of green here. And when I snip this in the middle of that green, which was the bobbin thread, I have effectively cut my bobbin thread and my top thread. Okay. So I need to move the camera so I can show you the next situation and do a quick questions check. So hang on, we're moving the camera again, folks.
pretty soon we're going to have one of these fancy apps with multiple camera angles. But right now, we're just quilting, right? We're just worrying about quilting. So we're back. I'm going to take a quick moment and check about, wow, look at all these comments. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. D, don't be intimidated by free motion, but I will tell all of us out there, the more we think about stuff, the more frightening it can be. I challenge us all to dive in. Do some research. I don't know if I told you all I fixed some of my own hot water in my kitchen a few weeks ago, and I worried and worried and worried about it for eight months, and it only took me four hours to fix it, and that includes watching two 10-minute videos on how to sweat copper pipe on YouTube. That's where it started, and I have wonderful hot water now in the kitchen. So sometimes I think we think about our patterns. I know I really often second-guess a pattern instructions, but if I will just really cut the size they said and then draw the line and then sew the line, it, it works. It's amazing. So anyways, don't be intimidated, Dee. We're here for you. Oh, great question. Uh, that is a lot of dense quilting. How long will it take? Let me show you from the back. It'll probably be easier to see the density of the quilting that I'm doing. Okay, so right there, that's the, the density we're working on. And all of that quilting really is only probably 10 minutes of focused work because I've been doing it during these videos and talking so much. So I assume this quilt on this will probably take me four to six hours. So I will pick out a few podcasts that I really want to enjoy. I will pick out some music I love. That's another great tip for a new quilter also. Think about your quilt as your dance partner. Maybe find some music that's got a little bit of an upbeat feel to it and practice dancing with your quilt, but over and over to the same music. So you develop a rhythm, a style, a cadence. That's really what we're, we're doing here is we're just developing rhythm with our hand and our machine movement. Um, you know, for me, I love the quilting. So the longer the quilting takes, the better. But what I want to talk about, and I'll get back to the comments in a second, but I think you can all see here. This is something I mentioned last week, but you couldn't see. The biggest disadvantage to a small sewing machine is I really have nowhere I can go and sit and my shoulder doesn't automatically come up. So with the wider spaced sewing machines, you can sit more naturally wide with your elbows lower, your shoulders lower, and that removes the fatigue from your body. If you're quilting in with your shoulders up in your neck and you're cramped up like this, you're really going to get cramped up in about 15, 20 minutes. Your forearms, your neck, and if you start to cramp, you're not going to have that motor movement you need. So this is something we actually practice for. Okay, this might be the most important and valid thing I say in this entire video, but our shoulders and our elbows are large motor movement tools for our body. Our wrists and our fingers are our fine motor movement stuff. Dense machine quilting like that is fine motor movement, but remember my hands were locked and all of that motion was coming from my shoulders and my elbows. So we have to retrain our large motor tools to be fine motor movements and that will cause fatigue. So the best thing to do is do this like you would train for any other sport. Do a little bit of machine quilting today. I'm going to say 15 to 20 minutes and then stop. Tomorrow, 15 to 20 minutes and do that four to five days in a row and take a break. Then come back in and start adding time. I have not domestically machine quilted in years, really, since I've gotten the long arm. So my ability to sit and machine quilt is much less than it used to be. I used to be able to quilt for hours at a time, and now maybe an hour, and I need a good hour, hour and a half long break. Biggest key that I'm trying to say is don't quilt so long that you become fatigued. It will take you longer to recover. That means longer that it, you have to wait to have fun again, and no one likes to wait to have fun. No one likes to late to have fun. Uh, hey, Deb, I'm glad you're out there. I'm, you can see I'm working hard today, <laughs> having a blast. All right. Yes, um, fine practicing on a mug rug. Uh, yes, the warm-up quilt. That was something we were talking about. 
um, in the last video as well, having a warm up quilt. And today before I went live, I warmed up on this quilt for about another 10 minutes. Uh, I hadn't used this machine yet for quilting in years. I just set it up last night for the video and I did. That warming up was very important. It made me feel more relaxed as you saw when we started today's video. So this is wonderful. Um, oh, I guess I've definitely gone over time. Um, let me see if I've got any other questions I can answer. Again, I really appreciate y'all being out here today. Make sure, I'm not sure if I've mentioned in today's video, but we do have our wonderful Qui Christmas and Quiltman, December 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, our expo, the new uh, expo center is going to be open. And I think that the tickets have just gone for sale, so you can get signed up right away. I will be there. It will be amazing. We can hang out and play with quilts together in person. So make sure that you come and see us. That's December 1st, 2nd, and 3rd this year. Um, Oh, great. Mary's going to be at the Outdoor Quilt Show with two quilts. Yay, Mary. That's awesome. I've got quilts packed to bring, too. This is awesome. Okay. Um, wonderful, everybody. Great. Okay. So if I've missed an important question, please put it at the bottom. I'm getting distracted. Um, fantastic. So next week, I won't be doing a live quilting video because um, I'm going to be doing live videos while I'm out in Texas. So make sure you're signed on. Let's just do a little bit more stitching just to have a little bit of fun while I'm ending today's video and giving you all time to answer some questions. I'm going to find myself the middle of the quilt again and start to work its way into the sewing machine. This is a seven inch machine and that was important for several of you to see how to get through some of this stuff. Okay. Um, wonderful. Okay. So here's where I've been quilting. It's important to work from where I had been quilting uh, into the new space to be filled in with my quilting. So I'm just finding another good spot in here. And then again, for management's sake, I'm rolling this up near the machine. And that's really just to help me prevent accidentally getting uh, an edge of the backing or the batting folded under. I think five six or six quilts I think in my lifetime now I've made several hundred quilts so it's not a bad average but I think I have five or six quilts that have some sort of backing and batting on the back exposed because I folded over them it's pretty embarrassing um crazy all right everybody Brenda and Michelle thank you I really appreciate the awesome comments um this is awesome okay let's see so let's come on back in here and just drop this needle down again. I'm going to just do it manually because I don't have the needle up feature, needle down feature. There's my bobbin thread dropping my presser foot. And again, I like to just kind of come back in here, take a few stitches in place. And then I'm going to run this foot using the back of the foot this time along the edge of my fabric that is the purple ombre patchwork and now the front. I like to just build in that echo quilting around the patchwork parts where I can. And then that gives me the opportunity to go back in and kind of do that free motion, the swirls and the circles, that dense quilting we're doing to just kind of fill in our spaces. Working to keep a nice stitch that I can see it but having to get my machine speed regulated first. So whether you have a machine stitch speed controller where you can set it to half speed or three quarter speed, I'm just doing it by finding a balance in my foot. And I want my machine to run at a pace I'm comfortable with so that then I can just use my hands to control that balance and get a nice stitch length. I'm going to end with a few of the recommendations. If you're, any of you are out there looking for a new sewing machine, I will remind you us at Stitch in Heaven. Uh, we are Bernina 
and handy quilter dealers and uh, they are be beautiful beautiful machines they even have some of the pre-used pre-loved machines there so you might want to check those out in person especially if you're in town for the quilt show so for free motion machine quilting i mentioned earlier i like a machine that's a straight stitch only if possible but that means you're going to need two sewing machines so yes size matters and the bigger the machine the easier it is on our bodies to get the quilt underneath but it's not imperative as we're seeing today and hopefully we'll see in a few weeks when I get the right foot for my wonderful old featherweight here that was my grandmother-in-law's and I think we're going to name her Hilda after Hilda whose machine it was I think that's appropriate and then the second thing I was talking about and this is going to be important for everything and even like on this older machine is speed we don't want to run the machine either so hard that we wear it out because it's not built to go for four hours in a row at top speed or I was also mentioning that the speed of the machine allows me to move the fabric smoothly. So I want to get to a place where the machine is running and I'm comfortable to have my hands close to the needle, but it runs fast enough that I can come in and out of those swirls and swoops and enjoy uh, more of that fluidity of the free motion quilting. And that's really why I got into it. So looking for straight stitch if possible, machine size, machine speed are things that really help with the specific of free motion machine quilting when it comes to this kind of work. So at any rate, I'm so glad you were all here. Uh, if you're the praying type, say your prayers for me as I travel tomorrow uh, on my way to Texas. I'm super excited. I will see hopefully many of you on Saturday at the Quilt Show in Quitman, uh, possibly at Expo. Would be wonderful to see you in December out there. And we will be seeing you online if we're not seeing you in person next week. Make sure you're subscribed, everybody. Have an incredibly blessed time in your sewing room and as I like to say, stay well.